Paul Collins, welcome to the program. Thank you, David. Now, there are some very mixed views uh, when it comes to the life and legacy of Cardinal George Pell. You first met when you were both young men on the footy field. How do you remember him? Um, well, I was actually the umpire of the game, and um, I remember him as a pretty rough player, but I have to tell you, a very good player of AFL. Uh, such a good player that, of course, he was um, offered a contract with the Richmond Football Club, which he didn't take up, but went to the seminary instead. So, But it was on the footy field that we first met each other. Well, he might have been a rough player as... Um within the church he was a staunch traditionalist i suppose how did this conservatism place george pell within the church and i suppose too amongst its its followers well i i should admit right up front david that um i uh, Cardinal Pell and I were protagonists on quite a number of occasions, um, particularly on the ABC. Um, look, his position was that the Catholic Church had been founded by Jesus Christ, uh, that its whole tradition was, if you like, following on from the teaching of Jesus, and that it, ha it had an infallible teaching authority, which was vested in the Pope, and that nothing uh, in human history could change that. Uh, it, it was as though the church was some kind of abstract entity uh, that was unchangeable and outside of history. Now, uh, my disagreement with Cardinal Pell was that I have, and many other Catholics have, a very different view of the church, that the church is, is part of history. It's part of humanity. It's part of the whole development that occurs uh, within the context of history. And so... Um, uh, you know, much of our much of the disagreement that I had with Cardinal Pell, and it's the it is really the I think I represent the kind of disagreement that many people would have had with him is that uh, look the church has got to enter into dialogue with society, it's got to talk to people, um, it's it's not some immovable, infallible, unchanging entity. Well, the name George Pell, of course, became synonymous uh, with how the Catholic Church really mishandled cases of child sex, uh, sexual abuse and, and, and let down victims and survivors. Uh, a Royal Commission rejected key parts of the evidence that he gave about what he knew of the notorious pedophile priest, uh, Gerald Ridsdale, Ridsdale. Did George Pell, in your view, fail the children of Ballarat in particular? Look, I don't know what his knowledge was of what was actually happening in Ballarat. If he knew, then he failed. But I think the real failing lies in the response in Melbourne. The bishops, had, uh, the Australian bishops, had at last woken up to the fact that there was a real problem that the church was facing, that vulnerable people had been absolutely devastated in the way they were treated, and they were moving to do something really under the inspiration of Bishop Jeff Robinson in Sydney. Um, Pell moved in to cut across that arrangement that the bishops were putting in place and they set up the Melbourne response in many ways to limit, I think, the church's liability. And for that, I find it very hard um, I, to forgive him, really. Well, does that uh, example, and also the example of him accompanying, Rids accompanying Ridsdale to court, does it show at the very least a lack of compassion for the uh, victims and survivors? Um, well, m many people would say that he lacked compassion, but I know people who've experienced him personally where they have really seen a man of compassion. Mm. I think part of his problem was that he had this kind of absolutist understanding of the church, this absolutist understanding of the priesthood, and that what he was lacking was a kind of a pastoral sense, a sense of care for people, uh, which to me at any rate has to be the absolute hallmark of anybody who was working in ministry. I think, it, I think that's what was really lacking within his personality, a care for and an understanding of people who were hurt. Finally, uh, his friend uh, and former Prime Minister Tony Abbott has described Cardinal Pell as a saint. Uh, who he says suffered a modern form of crucifixion in relation to all of that. Uh, lawyers for abuse victims, however, say he'll be remembered for absolutely failing survivors. What legacy do you think he leaves? Well, I, I think Tony Abbott's a bit on the premature side to be saying that, that he's a saint. Um, I, I certainly would not view him uh, in, in, that, in that way. 
Um, my praise for him would be for what he did within the Vatican. He brought um, a bit of uh, common sense and a bit of transparency and accountability to Vatican finances. And I think that the Vatican is in a better state now financially than it was certainly before he went there. Um, as a result of the work that he did. Uh, his work was cut short because he had to come back to Australia uh, to face the charges here. Uh, but that work has continued in the Vatican. And um, as someone who watches the Vatican pretty carefully, I have to say I think um, the work that he did there has borne fruit and that the Vatican is a better place, at least financially and in terms of accountability, uh, for his work there. Paul Collins, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, David.